All right, so let me demonstrate how this optimistic concurrency works. Uh, here on the right, I have some database partition, and it has a bunch of pieces of data in it. Let's just call these bank accounts. There's an account for someone named Aiden, um, and the current version of the information about Aiden is version 23. Um, we could also say that this is the E tag over here is 23. And Aiden's balance for his bank account is $768. Grant has, is another person. He has a bank account here, and it's got $444 in that account. And the version of this information, or the E tag of it, is 0762. And then down at the bottom, we have Jeff's bank account. Um, it has only $100 in it, and it's at version 1 because Jeff just opened his bank account, so we haven't done a lot over here. We've only added $100 in it to open the account, and so this is the first thing that has happened. So this is what our database looks like, and I just put Aiden and Grant here just to say there's more entries in the database, but we're going to focus on Jeff's bank account down here at the bottom. Now, I have two services here, and these are stateless services that are going to try to manipulate Jeff's account. The first service is going to try to add $23 to Jeff's account, and the other service is going to try to add $32 to Jeff's account. So you can imagine that maybe, you know, I'm at my ATM machine, and I'm trying to add $23 to my account, and maybe my wife is at another ATM machine, and she's also trying to add this money to, a, maybe this is our joint account, that we and we're trying to add these two dollar amounts simultaneously, right? We happen to be doing it at the exact same moment in time. And we want to make sure that no data gets corrupted. So let's walk through how this is going to work. Well, these two machines, or ATMs in this case, they're going to make a request to go get the information from Jeff's account. So they both get that Jeff's account is currently at version 1, and it has $100 in it. And both of these stateless services, they get the same value. Now, the top service wants to add $23. So it's going to increase the balance by $23. The bottom service wants to add $32. So it's going to add $32. Now, what's going to happen is both of these services are going to send the change back into the database. And they are sending back the whole record, which includes the version or e tag information. So let's say service one, it sends the information first. The service says, well, you had version one, and I have version one. This is before the change right over here, right? Hold, let me go backwards, right? And I have version one. So since I have version one and you had version one, that means that I know that this information is based on the version I had in here. So I will accept your 123. So this now becomes a balance of $123, and the version number gets incremented or changed to the number 2. Now when service 2 takes its information and sends it over, the database says, wait a minute, you had version 1, but I'm now version 2. So you made your change here based on earlier information. It's not up to date or current with what I currently know. And so when this request comes in, the database says, no, I refuse to accept this change because it was based on old information. It's not based on the new information. And when the database says no, it also returns back to service two the latest information. So service two says, look, the latest information, or is told, the latest information is version two, and we have $123. So now service two gets this, and this is its new starting point. It now retries its operation. In this case, it's going to add the $32 to the 23, 123, which makes it $155 now. And so now service two is going to send this back to the database, and when it sends it back, it will now have version two. So the database is gonna say, I see. So the last information you had was version two, and the current information I have is version two, that means you were operating with the latest information, so I will accept your change. And so now we're at version three, and we have $155 in the account. So this is optimistic concurrency because we're making the assumption that everything's going to be successful. The only time we had to do a retry and 
perform the operation over again is only in the case of failure and or when there's conflict. And the only time we have conflict is if these two services are trying to modify the same entity at the exact same moment in time. And in most situations, that is incredibly rare. So it's very unlikely that you will ever have to retry this operation. And so the optimistic concurrency tends to have really great performance because you almost never have to do retries. You get the value, you change the value, you take it, nobody's changed it behind your back, so it just gets accepted, and then you just move right along to the next thing. And that's the beauty of optimistic concurrency.